aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Those are the three ingredients to shooting manual photography. And manual photography gives you much better control over the look and the feel of your photographs. Last week, we talked all about aperture. This week, we're gonna talk about shutter speed, how it affects your photos, how you can get some really beautiful, interesting looking photos using shutter speed, and how to control it. So let's get into it. What is shutter speed and how does it work? Well, when you take your photo, your camera is opening a shutter to allow light to hit the sensor and then closing that up. And the shutter speed is controlling how long to leave that shutter open for. Now, this is usually controlled by a dial on your camera. It's slightly different from brand to brand, but there'll be a dial that you can adjust to actually change the shutter speed. It's measured in time. So for example, one four hundredth of a second, one eight hundredth of a second, one one hundred sixtieth of a second, and setting that to different lengths of time, including much longer, like one second, two second, ten second, will affect how long that shutter is left open for. Now, of course, the longer the shutter is open for, the more light is gonna be let in to hit the sensor. So it's gonna result in a brighter image. That's how shutter speed affects the exposure. But it's also gonna affect the look of the image with movement. So a faster shutter speed, let's say one eight hundredth of a second, will freeze the action much, much better than let's say one tenth of a second. It won't be nearly as bright. One tenth of a second will be a much brighter image, but one eight hundredth of a second will freeze things in place much better. I'm gonna give you an example because it can be a little bit difficult to imagine without seeing it. So for example, this shot is taken at one eight hundredth of a second. And you can see the movement of the water is frozen. It is just absolutely picked out a moment in time. That's how it was. Let's shoot that same image at one tenth of a second. You can see there's much more movement in the water. We've not frozen it in place and we've got quite a bit more blur. Now, this is one thing that a lot of new photographers trip up on when it comes to sharpness. A faster shutter speed will usually result in a sharper photo because it will get rid of any kind of blur from movement in the photo. One four hundredth of a second is always a pretty safe bet for human movement. And then faster if you've got things like water or sports, wildlife, animals, something like that, that you wanna absolutely freeze the motion of. But you won't always want to freeze that motion. Sometimes you want to blur things out. And that's where long exposure comes into effect. If you have your camera on a tripod so that it's not moving and you're not getting a blurred photo that way, you might want to actually photograph the water with a longer shutter speed. So let's say five or 10 seconds. It's gonna let a lot more light into that sensor, but it's also gonna really smooth out and blur the movement of the water, which can make for some really interesting photos. It really comes down to, do you want to freeze the motion or do you want to emphasize the movement? Shutter speed allows you to control the look of the movement in your photos while also affecting the exposure. Now, of course, if you are gonna use faster shutter speed, which will result in a darker photo, you will need to get the exposure back from somewhere else. And one of the ways you could do that is with an aperture. So if you use a faster shutter speed, you might want to use a more wide open aperture to let more light in that way. But that's effectively the two things shutter speed is affecting. The exposure or the brightness of the photo and then how the movement is portrayed. How is it frozen or is it actually portrayed as a more blurred, smoothed out movement? Next week we'll talk about ISO. Last week we talked about aperture so that video is already available and of course if you're watching this in the far future all the videos are available anyway. We've also got a video all about how to shoot manual photography in under 10 minutes, which I'll pop down in the comments and the description so you can check that out for yourself as well. There's links to all the stuff used for this video and all the photos in the description as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I will see you tomorrow for the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.